Hey guys, welcome to my first Fluke Fashion Friday, where I show off your fashion and we vote for a winner. This is my first episode, so the submissions came from the Lazy Lads Discord, which I co-own. Next week is open to all, just make sure you watch till the end so you can see how you can submit your fashion. Just make sure that you keep to the weekly theme. Alright, let's get started. First up on the fashion runway, we have Poison Demon from Keo. On first glance, I didn't think this particular outfit was very demon-y or even poison themed. It looked more like a Nabushi with a nature theme, with the fox mask and the ears and all, but then POW! Kyo equipped his Nabushi with the Oni mask from the Halloween event and I think it really ties the outfit together. I like how the purple from the mask complements the green in the outfit. It really makes this Nabushi look like an otherworldly fighter ready to provide a slow and very painful death. Next fashion coming down the runway is Sheikah Armor by Daddy Dalbany. As the name suggests, this is a fashion for Shinobi that tries to emulate the Sheikah Armor from the Legend of Zelda series. Daddy Dalbany also attempted to copy the variation from Breath of the Wild specifically. On the back of the outfit, you can see a custom symbol that was made that's pretty close to the Sheikah eye on Link's shield in this photo. I thought this little detail really sold the outfit as a whole. Truly a legend of fashion, this shinobi is ready for adventure. Back to the runway, we can see we have Greyjoy Lander by Zero Crack coming down as our next fashion star. This Highlander is of course inspired by the House Greyjoy in hit television series Game of Thrones. The Greyjoys are a harsh, brutal people who drape themselves in all black. Crack is thrown in what looks to be like the insect swarm idol effect, making him look even more dirty and rugged. The Greyjoy house banner is a large kraken, and Crack has represented this with the twisted and spindly ornament for his Highlander, as well as using the symbol on his back. Let's hope our favorite Greyjoy lives to see the next season. Next fashion coming down the runway is Warlord of Soul by Flamma. I like when you guys make your own little titles, by the way. It saves me some work. Warlord of Soul is a really intimidating fighter with what reminds me of an almost Aztec type theme. I think what sells the outfit most is the ornament. It's subtle, but really helps sell the theme of the fashion. Flamma also included this mighty golden shield with what looks like a burning black sun printed on the wooden bits. The smaller golden orbs remind me of planets orbiting around the sun as well. Really some good imagery here. Foes on the battlefield must tremble when they see this warlord ready to release the power of the sun. Storming down the runway now is Lord Thorn by Vestort. Vestort has chosen a very oppressive looking theme for his conqueror, which really fits the hero very well. Lord Thorn demands respect on the battlefield as his monochromatic red coloration and spiky thorny armor strike fear into the heart of his enemies. Vestort has also opted for the Hellfire effect to give this conk an otherworldly intimidation factor. I also appreciate the choice of copper material on the armor which really blends well with the cloth portions. Armed with his skull shield, Lord Thorn is ready to bash some bodies. I hope you aren't bored of this catwalk transition because here comes The Lost Wraith by The Lost Wraith. Truly a man of character commitment. On first glance, this is a very oddball fashion statement. It includes a lot of complex patterns and definitely stands out from the crowd. Upon closer examination, it's clear that this fashion is held together by a theme of spooky eyeballs as is prominent on the helmet which looks like an eye with big gold eyelashes and also the patterns on the standards which have an eye-like flower design. I was a little disappointed in the back of the characters, it has a lot less going on in my opinion, and I'm not really sure why they chose the female warden model as the ponytail in the back kind of kills the idea that the lost wraith is indeed a wraith. But I regain favor with this fashion as even the sword seems to have an eye theme. Fashion is about standing out from the crowd and I definitely would recognize this warden if it were coming for me. Next, charging down the runway, we have Axe of Sauron by Tom Quasar. Axe of Sauron is holding a very exaggeratedly sized axe head with some spikes on his shoulder and a tiny little skull on his head. I like to think that this gives him a bit more intimidation height. While on the battlefield, he looms over his opponents, he also has chosen an idol effect that implies the demonic evil presence that Sauron is known for. It doesn't take much to make a raider look intimidating, but Axe of Sauron is ready to stand above them and deliver the punishment that his Dark Lord demands. 
Slowly, elegantly making his way down the runway is Grey Warden by Oakenwolf. Now this is a fashion statement that I had to slap myself for not thinking of first. Oakenwolf is dressed as Warden as a Grey Warden in Dragon Age. An excellent non-Dobbany use of Dobbany shame in my opinion. Warden is always king when it comes to fashion, which is why I try to only pick the Wardens that stand out and this is one of them. With a solemn stare and powerful presence, you can rely on a Grey Warden to see you through the night. Silently creeping down the runway is Undead Lord by Beatsman. Undead Lord appears to be draped in bloody tatters as his work as a resurrected monster is never done. When emoting you can see his fallen comrades cheer him on and his executions banish his foes. Permanently. Undead Lord is one lawbringer that has lost his purpose and that makes him the most dangerous of all. The final fashion of the day is A Waifu by Baz. This Nabushi is one you want to come home to as her fashion is put together to be cute and comforting. She has decorated her hat with a lovely cherry blossom and upon examination of her face you can see that she prepared for this photo shoot as even her mask has lovely eye makeup on. This Nabushi is one companion that can truly hold her own. Alright, that was all the fashions for this show. Be sure to comment your favorite fashion down below. The most popular fashion will receive a drawing by me of their hero, which will also be shown in next week's video. Next week's fashion theme, by the way, will be... Superheroes! If you'd like to submit your superhero themed fashion, the rules to do so are in the description of this video. Thank you everyone who submitted this week. I'll see you next time on Flukerson Fashion Fridays!